Hi, Steve Adubato at the 2019 NJA convention. Uh, you can see, you might be able to see behind us before I introduce Steve Swetsky, the executive director of the New Jersey Education Association. Governor Murphy's in the house, as they say. Steve, hey, I'm Governor, how are you going? How are you doing? Right, buddy. Good to see you. How's nice everything? See you, buddy. You, you're with the team. I'm with yeah. the team. Yeah. Governor. Sorry, everything I'm good? Not. Everything's great. NJA, all right? NJA, NJA is top of the. Top of the top. <laughs> Thank Murray, you agree? Yeah, oh, 100%. Oh, come on. Yes. Good Let's see what happens. <laughs> Thank you so much, Governor. Appreciate it. Well done. Take care, Sean, all the best. That's what happens when you're here live in Atlantic City at Convention <laughs> Center. Um, so, by the way, why don't we start with Governor Murphy? The relationship of the New Jersey Education Association with Governor Murphy is? A breath of fresh air. Uh, you know, he's been, a, he's been a partner. He just actually spoke to a uh, thousand of our members who were at a session with uh, Dr. Cornell West. So he was there for that big event. He uh, came up, he spoke, he talked about what he talked to our members about three years ago when he was here, when he was running for office. And everything he spoke about then is the partnership that we've been able to develop. See, if I ask, if I ask you about 2020, top two or three, dare I call them agenda items, let me disclose this, by the way, the New Jersey Education Association is an underwriter of the work that we do with the Caucus Educational Corporation and a supporter uh, of our colleagues and partners at NJTV News. Top agenda items are? Working with our members around social justice issues, economic justice issues, really starting to take a look at not just what happens in a classroom or what happens in a particular school, but what happens in communities. What are the things happening in communities that drive what happens in those schools? You know, let's break this down a little bit. The theme of social and economic justice, a big theme here at the 166th New Jersey Education Association Convention. Break that down. What does that mean in terms of education, our educators and our students? So I think typically, you know, unions uh, typically focus kind of on, you know, those collective bargaining issues, right, the wages, the working conditions. And dare we talk about pensions, which we will in a moment. Go ahead. <laughs> we, could, we could add in pensions and health benefits. But those are those the basic things, issues. But right? where does this come in? So if you, if you look around, if you look at communities, if you, you, know, you talk about student success and what drives student success, it's not simply what happens within a particular school, right? It's the, it's the out of school factors, right? That we talk about, but nobody really focuses on. So how do we look at what's happening in those communities? How do we get our members involved with working with community members to drive those conversations around the social and economic issues, jobs? right, medical care, mm. all of those pieces that, you know, kind of, you know, students step into our classroom and they're, you know, they're, into our, they're in our schools for seven or eight hours a day. They're someplace else for the rest of the day. And if where they are it, it isn't, you know, meeting their needs, we need to talk about those things. You we can't need to be say that's that. separate from what we do in the classroom. That's it's not all connected. really, it is connected. Yeah. Well, let's go back to an issue we mentioned before. Since you mentioned, I mentioned pensions. And Governor Murphy happened to be just walking past us. Huge issue. Governor Murphy's made it clear, and by the way, we're going to do an in-depth interview with Governor Murphy on this and a range of other issues. We've spoken to Steve Sweeney, the Senate president, as well. Google, excuse me, go on our website to check out that interview. To be super candid here, Senate President Sweeney has a certain view of public employees, particularly NJEA. And the governor has his view. Let's deal with pensions. So pensions are what they are, right? They're, a, they're, a, they're, a, they're created to provide a post-retirement yes. um, you know, benefit to public employees, right? It's always been a part of their compensation, right? It's kind of that balance of earn less than you could earn in the private sector, but, right, there's, a, there's something at the end. And our members and all public employees, they have faithfully made their contributions to the pension system out of every paycheck that they've made. And the pension They didn't issues. take a vacation on that? They, no, they didn't, actually. Actually, the state made a vacation. So they took a vacation exactly. several years through several years, administrations. 20 years. Define what that means, Steve. When we say take a vacation, it simply means the state did not pay into the public employee pension fund, which caused what kind of shortfall are we talking about? So it causes, when the state doesn't make its contribution, then only contributions from employees are going in. And that's a partnership, right, to fund pensions. It's a partnership between the employer and the employees. The so employees where are we have now? made their case. So uh, New Jersey's pension plan is still underfunded. The state has started to come back and make their required contributions. And there was a phase-in process, and the state has worked its way up. I believe this year's budget, we're at seven-tenths of what should be paid in 
We'd like to work our way back to the eight tenths, nine tenths, and a full contribution. And then it will take a period of years of the state paying what they're required to pay mm. to bring the pension back to where it should be. But it's, what's interesting, Steve, is that when we did have the Senate president, and, and by the way, there's some history here, the, the New Jersey Education Association um, actually did not support the Senate president in a recent election in his district. A lot of money was spent in that race. A lot of things were said back and forth. Don't know if that has anything to do with this or not, but the reality is, in that interview we did with him, he said, you know, we did some things as it relates to the pension. The public employee unions did a lot, but we need to do more. They need to give more. You say? I say that, that the state needs to continue to make their contributions, right? We need to get to a place where there is a balancing point where the employees, right, longtime employees, public uh, servants, right, who, who enter pu public service to work for the interests of not just in schools, but in our, in our police and fire, in our municipalities, right? Um, that you can't just continue to cut, right? Because at the end of the day, you could, cut the, you could cut pensions to zero, and there's still an unfunded liability caused by the states not paying for that 20-year period. And not to mention, I want to be clear here, in your view, Steve, does that have any impact on recruiting teachers into the profession, knowing that that game is changing significantly? I, absolutely. Uh, you know, the pension system has been tiered over a number of years, so there's actually different levels of benefits for different employees, and each level has, you know, been less than the levels before them. One more, one more quick question outside of this. Um, as it relates to recruiting and retaining teachers, is it harder to keep, particularly the best teachers, harder? People come into education, they have a passion for it. They want to work with kids. They know they're right? not getting rich. And so they come into it with that belief that they're coming into something that's valued, right? And the value, it, it, how those things are kind of measured, the value of it is how they're treated, right? And Governor just, Murphy's a good way, example she, of that. The, but I also want to say this, sorry for interrupting, Steve. We actually, also just finished an interview with the Teacher of the Year, Kimberly. Mm -hmm. She obviously could have made more money doing other things. She's one of the best teachers you'll ever meet. She's unbelievable, and she has a passion for the work, the passion for the students, a passion for her community. I don't know if she told you the story. She got married. Wait, right? hold on. She didn't tell us that. She got married at the at school? At the school. Right? So that's how, that's how much she cares about her being part of that school community. And that's really what, that's what our members do, right? All of our members that are here, here yesterday, what they do every day, they do it because they care. And we, we know that, right? They know that because when parents talk to them, right? That's right. I always would say to, uh, when I worked in the field and I worked directly with members, I would always say to them, I know every one of you have a, have a, you have a file folder someplace. And in that file folder are letters and thank you notes, right? Of all of the students that you've impacted. And, they, and people do that over careers of 15, 20, 25, 40, some people 50 years. Those are people that are making a difference, right? And, and you know, kind of the payback for that is the respect, right? It's being paid a fair wage. It's having a pension that was promised to you be funded by the people who said they would fund Not to it. mention the impact you're having on young people who are going to be adults and contributing members to society. Exactly. Steve Swetsky is the executive director of the New Jersey Education Association. He took over in August of 2019. Yep. Okay, and we look forward to talking to you in the future about a range of education issues. Thank you, Great. Steve. Look forward to that. Thank you very much. All the best. Stay right there. We'll be right back right after this. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by NJM Insurance Group, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Wells Fargo, Hackensack Meridian Health, the North Ward Center, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, and by Adler Aphasia Center. Promotional support provided by Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey. And by AM970, The Answer.